the biggest thing now is safety. And that is something that is the utmost because we want to make sure everybody gets home to their family, their loved ones, um, you know, friends, whatever it might be, wherever you are in life. Uh, we want to make sure people get home. And, you know, there's been some pretty bad stories over the last couple of weeks, uh, actually the last several months, but, you know, some some very, very bad ones over the last couple of weeks, especially with yeah. what happened in Florida, uh, which we're going to be talking about in uh, its own segment. But, yeah. um, you know, one of the things that we want to talk about is when you have the ability to try to use um, something like the button uh, on 911 on Uber to try to get emergency services. Um, but does it work as it's supposed to? So that's what we're going to be talking about right now, where a driver had recently posted to us uh, talking about their story about having to use that 911 button and kind of how it didn't work as they expected. So let's get right into that now. Yeah. So I get these emails all the time. Some are, some we put up, some we don't. Um, um, obviously, with his permission, this driver in North Carolina. Look, we have the 911. Okay, if you ask Uber, Uber says we have all the safety tools in the app necessary. You know, to a point, I agree. Now they have video capability, audio encrypted capability, 911 button, follow me on my ride, all the stuff, mm -hmm. which are good additional things in the app for the driver's safety. However, you are ultimately on your own. You don't even want to test these buttons, okay? Really, you really don't. If you're at that point, just get out of Dodge. Pull up in a gas station, take off. Take your phone, take your keys if you can, and run, period. Uh, other than that, it's up to God. So this gentleman um, at 1157 picked up a trip. This is my first time reaching out to you guys, but I know there has been a lot of talk about safety lately. Agreed. Uh, what I'm sharing with you happened last night, 4-17-23 uh, at 11.57 p.m. I live and work in Raleigh, North Carolina area. Last night, as I often do, I work primarily in the airport area with most of my rides being transporting riders to and from the airport. As I dropped off my last passenger from the airport, I took a ride that I would not typically accept because the drop-off was on my way home and I was quitting for the night. My pickup was at a Ramada Inn in a decent area of Raleigh. All right. I pulled up and a couple came out carrying suitcases and bags. By the way, this was also an entry on our Show Me the Extra Mile Sunshine Award. But, you know, kind of similar story. But um, John got it. I opened the back gate and the girl puts her suitcase and backpack into my car. She turns to the guy and says, give me my bag. He was carrying a large duffel bag. He immediately looks at her and says no. And the argument begins. It ends with them scuffling for a minute and him giving her the bag. She gets in my car and says, please, can we get out of here? He's never laying his hands on me again. So these wife beaters, if I do ever find you, I will you know, smack you where you don't belong. So stop abusing women, man. What the f mm -hmm. whatever. I mean... You know, take take pick on somebody your own size. How about that? Huh? There you go. So anyway, he's never laying his hands on me again. As I begin to pull away, he steps in front of my car and will not move. Well, are you glad? Aren't you glad that was not an autonomous car? Because that thing would never move. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. I back up and he runs around behind the car. I pull forward and he runs back in front of my car. Look at this driver dealing with this shit, man. I press the 911 button available to us in the Uber app and tell them what is happening. They inform me that they have dispatched a unit, and as soon as he realizes I have called 911, moves from in front of my car, and I pull away while still on the phone with 911, letting them know what I'm that I'm leaving because I feel like I need to get this girl away from the area. I took her to the bus station where she was getting on a bus to go home to her mother's house in another city. That was a lot to get to my point. Approximately 42 minutes after calling 911 through the Uber app, I received a call from Uber. Well, by then, you know, it's done. It's finished. Um, it was a robot calling informing that they were aware I had called 911 and, and wanted to know if I was safe. I, it told me that if I needed to talk to a rep,
to press zero. So I did. I was on hold for a few seconds and then was disconnected. Nobody called back. And 52 minutes following the 911 call, I received a message in the app telling me that they want to make sure that I'm safe. Well, if this was really bad stuff going down, he'd be dead. And that if I feel unsafe to please reply to this message. So I did. Five hours later, I received a message from Uber Priority Support telling me how serious they take these things and that they were sorry my rider did not maintain appropriate standards and that they made a note to be sure I was on match with this rider again. I'm going like, this, if this is what Daryl's chat GPT AI support is going to look like, we're in trouble. If it was my rider that was in danger, she told me she had beaten, he had beaten her badly the previous weekend, and she was at the motel following that. He had tracked her there through her phone. It is unacceptable that Uber's support in these situations is a robot call and a text message. I also have dash cam footage that I haven't isolated and edited as of yet. I apologize for the long message, but my press frustration is off the charts with Uber right now. Thankfully, the girl's on her way home to her mother's house. She told me she had not seen her mother in over a year because this guy would not let her. Well, so this is one case. I'm not going to make one case the norm, put a blanket, you know, blame game. Now, if 911 is working like this in one case, in how many other cases out of those 2 billion chips, it worked like this? Unacceptable. Again, though, we always say, you're out there on your own. All the buttons, <clears throat> all the bells, all the whistles are meaningless. Do not depend on them unless, I mean, last choice, maybe you have to, right? But yep. ultimately, head your head on a swivel. Before you pick up, don't open, don't unlock your doors. All these things we said millions and millions and millions of times. Safety starts with you as the driver, period. We can, blame, we can play the blame game. I mean, you know, a lot of channels play the blame game, but I'm like... Yeah, in this case, 42 minutes, 52 minutes, five hours later, unacceptable. Yep. That part is and you know what? And you know what? This is this is the cases that are going to happen continuously that are not accounted for because when you dial 911 and it goes through the app, the app is automatically going to assume, okay, there's a problem with the rider or the account holder yep. if it's coming from the driver's phone. And so they're, they're not accounting for the situation of, of what actually had happened, especially if they're using these robo uh, answering services or uh, text messages or whatever it might be um, in order for that to happen. So it's like, um, yeah, you can't really have that. You got to put a little bit more into it or at least, you know, try to figure out what's going on. Um, you know, I don't know if, if it's something where they're listening on and having a, you know, a record of the 911 call within the system itself yeah. because you're going through the app. So it's something where they can be potentially locked into as well too. Um, and then that way, you know, they can kind of transcribe that phone call and see exactly what's going on uh, and then, you know, send it to the right people. That's, that's all technology that could be implemented as well too. Yeah. Uh, so you can't just rely on one thing and then say, Oh, well, we want you to be safe. And, you know, it, it, wasn't even relevant to the to the story of what had yeah. happened. So yeah. uh, still crazy nonetheless. I don't know yeah, what's I, going I, on. I, I don't know with, what's in the I water agree. out there, but yeah. holy I shit. I agree with the fenestrator here. He goes, your car is your best weapon. I agree. It's a, it's a two-ton weapon. Just run the goddamn guy over. I mean, screw that guy. Because yep. like, you don't know if he's going to pull a weapon on you or a gun on you. Or, you know, every, next time he gets in front of your car, I'm like, you know, hey, man, you know, let's move on. But. You know, this was another story, but, you know, we picked Jeff's story because I think it was a little bit more involved. But again, thank you for this driver to do what he did, taking her to safety from an abuser. And, uh, you know, all these drivers are the unsung heroes of the rideshare world, right? Look, there is shit to be fixed and we're trying to fix it. Trust me, people. We're working hard on the background. We're trying to fix shit. But mm -hmm. these types of things make you know, right share irrelevant, really money irrelevant, right? You're saving a human life because if this guy was an a-hole driver and left her there and took off, he may have beat her to death. Who knows? I mean, all I'm saying is Uber and Lyft, you guys should consider yourselves lucky to have Johns and this driver and all Jeffs and Nathaniels on your, on your systems, man. Because to me, this is what it's all about, right? And, and mm -hmm. 
you know, yeah, we all want to make money. Yeah, but, you know, and we're going to talk about this next segment probably. And money versus life. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I take life any day, bro. So, but <laughs> well, anyway. For sure. Yeah. So, thank you to this driver again. Not surprised by John. He's a serviceman. He, Either yeah. way, though, the, the one thing, though, too, is you got the dash cam footage. Hopefully, yeah. it's recording audio as well. Uh, so, yeah, if, if anything happens and you have to run them over, you got that footage right there saying, hey, look, this is what's going on. We had to get out of the situation. I don't know what was happening. Yeah. And, you know, he, he was blocking us in. We tried calling 911, but in, in the time being, seconds can count. And yeah. if seconds count, I need to get out of there. I need her to get out of there to be safe. Yeah. And yeah. if I ran him over, well, back it up and, you know, make sure the job is okay. Uh, yeah. Don't do that. I mean, try, yeah. try to use your heads there because uh, I don't want to be liable for your, uh, um, for anything that happens. Uh, I'm not oh. liable. Use your head. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.